Suzanne Goldenberg for The Guardian at the Apple Data Center in North Carolina. The sun is finally coming out here after a little bit of rain in this huge solar farm. There are 55,000 solar panels here and they provide the power for Apple's big data center in North Carolina. This is the energy source for the iCloud. And with iCloud, it all works automatically and wirelessly. A few years ago, Apple was one of the bad guys of the tech world because of its heavy use of dirty power. Now, they say they're outgreening the other companies because of facilities like this solar farm right here. We've been given rare access to Apple's data center and our tour guide, Lisa Jackson, who made the jump from Barack Obama's administration to the corporate world to lead Apple's climate change agenda. We do feed into the grid and then buy back power. So we're actually adding to the amount of green generation in the state. Right now, this is just one of the three solar farms that are going to be powering this data center. But the idea is that projects like this one are going to push utility companies like Duke Energy to clean up their game. If we weren't here, this would be about 52% nuclear, about 35% coal, less than 1% renewables. Data centers over 160 million kilowatt hours that it's generating every year. That's the equivalent power for 14,000 U.S. homes. So Apple is already on its way to greening the cloud. Now what it's got to do is to green the supply chain, which is responsible for a lot more carbon emissions. We believe that part of our responsibility is to be responsible for our products and the material in our products all the way through their life cycle. You know, I, I don't want to make promises about how we're going to attack the supply chain, but we are aware that almost 70% of now our carbon footprint is in our um, supply chain. And of course, those are facilities that we don't own. Um, and so we're going to have to work with our partners there to build capacity and figure out how to address it. They, they use so much electricity that it really matters where they're getting it. And I think they've responded to activists. Beth Henry was one of the activists pushing Apple to go green, and she's happy now that they're powering the cloud with solar. They have, you know, used their clout. But she argues that Duke Energy is still selling power too cheaply to companies like Apple and making it too difficult for customers like her to go solar. Honestly, I don't see many upsides for regular people because they are getting their electricity so cheap that the costs of power plants are shifted mainly to regular people. So we pay more for electricity because they are getting cheap electricity. I would say what the data centers want from Duke is low cost power and reliable power. Those two things, cost and reliability, are fundamental to their operation. Duke says energy hungry companies like Apple are always going to need backup. They can never go entirely off the grid. They're still hooked up to our grid, but they're still a very important part of our system. So they always like to have the grid there to back up if something goes wrong on their system. Jackson says she can be an environmental leader in the corporate world and in government. At EPA, the primary tools are, are the power of our laws and regulations. At Apple, there's a business opportunity, though. There's an opportunity in getting ahead of the trend to move towards being self-sufficient on energy and using clean energy. I tell people all the time that I went from being an environmental leader to being an environmental leader.